panel. So I'm very excited to, to have now with us um, Stefan Müller, CEO of Anna Park, uh, Jason Kwan and Gao uh, from Long EJ and Trina once again. So the we just have around 30, 40 minutes um, 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 to, to basically uh, reflect on the conference. And the idea was um, to start basically with Stefan, simply who's uh, um, a user of these um, of modules and um, is also confronted with all these innovations that we've been seeing recently. So um, we, we wanted to structure it that way that we start with Stefan to give an intro on, on, on innovation and the challenges he sees. And then Jason Kwan and Gao, we discuss about that. Yeah. Um, okay. So Stefan, uh, great to have you. Um, so let's, let's maybe, maybe start um, um, with, with Anna Park. Um, you're an EPC, you're a developer, you're an IPP. You are a company that's really embracing uh, solar innovations um, um, in general. Um, so, what, 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 what are you seeing in terms of innovations that you've actually incorporated recently, recently also into your into your power plants? Yeah, at first, thanks for for being there. For me, it's always interesting to see what's going on in the market. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and to see the developments, which normally you don't see, yeah? because you get the module and that's it uh, for sure. Um, we have a market which, uh, which I think is very dynamic, is very interesting, very good. And I see more and more new things are coming up. On the other hand, and Michael, I think you confirm it, all the developments which we have seen now with half cut cells, Schindel and so on, these are in generally old things, yeah? which are implemented now. Yeah. So, and that's the reason why I'm super keen. And for me, also, only the discussion about uh, increasing efficiency with a different backsheet is for me. This is for me new stuff. Yeah. And this is for me interesting. And I'm looking forward to see more and more things so that we are really uh, coming to 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 much higher efficiencies in the modules. Uh, and finally, higher efficiencies means finally also hopefully lower cost and finally uh, uh, reduced LCOE because this is the part of everything. Um, for us, new developments have a bit, uh, I would say, it's a, it's, it's a, I would say, a, in general, a deeper discussion. Do we really want this? Yeah, because you should have in your mind that uh, partly we are the IPP, we are the asset owner, and we are keen on, in generally, new technologies if the product are for us. Uh, but on the other hand, we get it all financed by local banks, and the banks are in generally very conservative. So they are in generally not keen to finance on non-recourse basis a 50 or 100 megawatt project with the cutting edge te technology because they need to evaluate the risk. And the same is with, um, with other developments which are more in the PPA level. So when you sign a corporate PPA with, uh, I would say, a big utility or even a big corporate, they have even another view. No? Um, they, for example, focus a lot on CO2 footprint yeah, or uh, recycling concepts. They And they are asking us, even if they are the off-taker of the kilowatt hours of the electron, and they don't care um, uh, how we install it or they shouldn't care because we are the developer, we are the EPC, we are the owner. Yeah. So, and this is for me always an interesting move and we always have to adapt ourselves. So, but in, in, in general, we are always a fan of new things because finally we hope that uh, everything can become a bit easier in the production um, and we can, uh, we have also better arguments. I mean, we just talked a bit about the, the fluorofree backsheet. I mean, all the discussion about environmental topics are essential. Yeah, I mean, and this becomes more and more. So the off-taker of green energy is not anymore open for buying the electricity, probably the, the GOs, the certificates. They also want to know how and with whom and with what and where you generate electricity. Yeah, and I think this is, this, is, this is cool. And this is interesting for us, but this increases the, the, the discussions. Um, what, what we have seen now is that the increase of the efficiency is always perfect for us, but not all new developments are also, I would say, immediately the breakthrough in the reduced LCOE, as an example. Um, I think we, the 1,500 volt is more or less standard now. 
Yeah, uh, but a few years ago when it was introduced, um, all the suppliers of the connectors, of the cables, of the junction boxes, they sold the 1,500 volt approved additional uh, electrical parts as a premium. So I think the, the, the savings which we got from the 1,500 volts because of better design and, and longer cables and so on was eaten up by uh, all the suppliers of all the small materials. Yeah? Now it is standard. Yeah? Or another discussion which we had, <clears throat> Michael, uh, yesterday when we made our pre-session in terms of large mo mo modules. I completely understand that uh, from the cost point of view, it is better and, uh, and, uh, and easier to take a 70 cells modules instead of a 60 cell because the robot takes the module once. So utilization rate is clear. But for us, it's an issue because the, the, the weight of the mo modules is too high for handle it by one person only. So we need two. And two person means more cost, more time. So the benefit from our side, and especially on the utility scale, is not so much that the modules are getting larger and larger. I think it is different if you act in the residential market or in the commercial industrial market. These people, and it's a marketing story, they want to have cutting edge technology, they want to have the coolest stuff. Yeah. But for us, it is more important that we have a reliable product, which is bankable with a high quality, and ideally, I would say a durability, a lifetime of 30 or even 35 years. So these are a bit, I would say, uh, small views which we, which we have from, um, from, from, yeah, I would say utility scale uh, uh, developer, EPC, uh, and uh, IPP. And, and if you look at, you mentioned also sustainability, for example, um, which is on the one hand, a challenge and probably also an opportunity at the same time. So, so what does yeah. that mean or what does it entail, this whole topic? Uh, Naya, I think it is, it is not anymore a buzzword. Let's be clear. No, I think uh, uh, all the big players who are signing direct corporate PPAs with us, and this can be the Deutsche Bahn, the German Railway, or it can be whatever, Heineken or you name it, IKEA, I don't know. They are really they are concerned about the sustainability of the product. Yeah? And, uh, and, and this means really transparency on the supply chain, but also on the, as I mentioned, a, a good recycling co concept is really important, not only for us, but it's important for the final offtake. So the, the word sustainability is becoming more and more important um, when we move more and more to corporate PPAs. And this is for me also new, to be honest. Yeah? This, is, uh, this is interesting. I mean, when we are the owner, we generally leave the plant for 25, 30 years, and then it's written off, and then it's perfect, and we trade the energy, and we're making money. But at the moment, we see a different trend. And, and, and if you, and I think so, you mentioned also yesterday when we had our talk um, the, um, that that you are now even looking into into tracking in, in central European um, locations, which you haven't done in the past. Uh, yeah. And this is also, I would say, a bit, a, bit, a bit of a new situation. I mean, in the past, we always and generally try to find a way to reduce the, the subsidies. And in, if, I mean, Michael, you know, we talked a lot about dual use and something like this, yeah? But this was a bit, I would say, a fake story. But now the dual use idea is, is interesting because uh, at the moment, and we've seen now a few systems already in the Northern German part, um, where they installed a tracking system which large area mo modules with a higher distance, uh, mainly driven by the building permit, that the ground coverage ratio sh should be a bit more relaxed. So we, we, we should not uh, build it too close. And then the idea is automatically simple. If you have a wider distance, you make a tracking system, probably even a bit higher, yeah? And then you make a bifacial system. And then you can also make use of the situation when, when, when you have snow in wintertime on the system, then you can use the tracker. Let's, let's uh, slide, uh, let's, let, let, let's let the snow slide down and then you bring it back and you can uh, generate energy. And at the moment on the, on the, on the market, um, at the moment we deliver them the energy payers produce. Yeah? But this is also changing now to real load curves. And, and the load curve means that you have uh, generally, not only on the exchange, but also when you make a deal with a PPA offtaker, that in the morning and in the evening, the energy has a higher value. Yeah. So, and then the whole discussion about does it make sense to put a tracker system in Northern Germany is off. 
because then it's not only dual use, it's triple use, because you can only whatever grow hay there, which is organical, and you, you can take it out easily with a tracker system. So I think there are a lot of things coming up now um, where we can combine the concept of the large area module, which in general should be a bit cheaper, plus a bifacial idea and a tracker in the northern German part, which I think is new, but it's, I think it makes sense now. Okay, and when we talk about innovation cycles, so um, um, if the, we're seeing so much innovation now at the moment, yeah. and of course it can happen, I think we also saw that yesterday from Fraunhofer CSP, um, the, the stronger the innovation, of course, the more issues you have in the beginning, of course it will be fixed, but uh, it, it is happening. And, um, and, um, and so at um, some point you also have to replace then maybe some defect products. Um, so, but if the innovation is so fast, actually, then it might be after a few years also very difficult to replace um, the module that was once having that size and is now having yeah. that size. No, this is, um, this, is, this is interesting. And again, the innovation cycle is getting shorter and shorter, which I think uh, shows how dynamic our industry is. Yeah? And, and to be honest, this is also seen as positive from investors, from banks and so on. New players are coming in. Uh, new engineers are, 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 uh, won't want to be part of the industry, which I think is good. But have in your mind, if you change the, the module technology every six, nine or 12 months, this means for us that our cycle of redesigning system is getting also shorter and shorter. And for example, if we are getting a, a new system and, and let's call it a module, new inverter or structure or whatever, then it means that we have to get used to it during the installation, we have to work on it, we have to find improvements. And this is also a cycle time to, in, it, let's say, to improve the, the bill of material. Yeah? Um, and, uh, and the cost and the design has, has a huge impact on, on our LCOE, which we can offer. So uh, on one hand, good and super dynamic, uh, just what I've seen on the development here and uh, today only, um, this brings us also under pressure uh, to be uh, faster as well yeah in the in, in, in design works and optimizing designs yeah and and this is what I want to want to give also a bit to the to the people who are listening you know to the industry and I mean all the three uh, uh, guys who are sitting now with with me on the virtual panel I mean we we work with all of them and which is which is good and nice and we are looking forward to it um, however I think there is still the segment of residential, commercial industry, and utility. Yeah, and even in the utility, you have the segment uh, standard auctions. Uh, we are the owner versus PPAs. No? And these are in generally four auctions, uh, four segments, who have a di different dynamic. So I think in the residential and commercial, you you like dynamics, but we in generally we like dynamics if they have a benefit for us in terms of the LCOE. But if has it if this has no direct impact on LCUE, so for example, you make a new module and you make the price higher, but we, for us it's no benefit, then we are not interested in this. Okay, and then talk about once, um, just to, to finalize it, to talk a little bit about durability, because I think you said yeah. um, you're now, uh, when you go to banks, actually you, you talk about 35 years. Um, so we yeah. have warranties of 20 years um, for glass glass, 30 years now, um, but um, in your, calculation you have an asset um, you want to depreciate over 35 years uh, so um, can you can you just uh, so so what are you expecting then for from from the module makers also yeah, I audience? think in the past it was always driven by the feed-in tariffs over generally 15 20 years yeah in a few countries we had even a bit more but this was our mental calculation so with the financial modeling ended up on the day where we had no fundings and this was for us the business model. Yeah, for sure, there were also companies who, uh, who kept the plant, and at the moment, more and more things are falling off these 20 years uh, uh, subsidy time frame. And then we, we have now a chance, which, which we hadn't before, we have the chance to sell the energy on the exchange, which, or to make corporate PPAs, which I think is good. But the, the new development is different. So the new development goes, goes easily up to a financial modeling of to 30 or 35 years. It doesn't mean that we sign such a PPA. Yeah, the PPAs are in generally 
I would call it midterm, 12, 13, 15 years, 10 to 15, I would say. Yeah. But we are moving with our investment a bit into the situation with, with the real estates uh, uh, market, because we cannot sign a 30 years uh, uh, debt arrangement with the bank. We can only do it for 15 or 20 or something. And then we have to, to reshuffle it a bit. But the financial modeling with a, a prediction about energy price, which is difficult anyhow, uh, goes easily up to 30, 35 years. Yeah, so we are taking over a bit more the, 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 the financial modeling concept from the US, which was already there a few years ago. So, uh, and this bring, brings us, I would say, in a new situation, and I call it uh, service concept, recycling concepts, no? um, even repairable topics. Yeah? The, we all believe that the module price will go further down, and you can easily also probably in 10, 15, 20 years, you can ex exchange the inverter or even the, the modules. Yeah? Um, so I think th th this becomes more and more. But then the topic of recycling services, uh, repairment uh, of the system is becoming more and more vi visible now and important for us. Yeah? 35 years, a module will completely look completely different already in 20 years, I think, in terms of efficiency and so on. So doesn't it make sense at some point to replace them then? Um, so I think yeah. like you have yeah. also repowering with wind plants. Yeah. Uh, but, but, this is, uh, but this is not, a, I would say, a digital decision. You really have to do the financial modeling. We are doing this now with the inverters. In the past, in the financial modeling, we always say you exchange the inverter on year 11 and you put an accrual aside and that's it. Yeah, If you really do it, yeah, so is it a benefit or not? But at the moment, we are going very deep into it and we analyze also the situation. Okay, we have a high tariff now. So um, there are inverters who have a much higher efficiency now. The prices went down over the last 10, 10 years and even go further. So there is now a financial conceptual behind when you exchange, when it makes sense to exchange it. Yeah, and this will be the same for, for modules. This is a little bit restricted that in most of the countries, you cannot easily exchange the modules because they are registered on a big database uh, and you can only exchange the module when they are, when they are broken or something. In, in, with the in, in, inverter on feed-in tariffs in Germany, it's a bit easier. But with modules, you, you cannot do it. You cannot do it after the 20 years. When you do PPAs, for sure, when you're in the subsidy-free area, you can do it earlier. But I think this will come. We see it now more and more within, within the inverters. And then the discussion which we had also is becoming a bit easier that you probably build up your own stock. So for example, we have now inverters which are not anymore in the market. We exchange them, we repair it, put it in our stock, try to keep the technical availability on other plants high, but then we put a new inverter inside from, from our partners and we increase the efficiency. So you have a double effect. And I believe it can be similar to modules yeah okay super interesting i think that's was a great intro um thanks uh, stefan so let's let's come now to to um the module representative um jason kwan uh, gao so when you when you hear that what uh, what what stefan said uh, is this actually also when you sell your products or you develop also your products uh, is this is this similar comments you you are hearing from 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 the market from your clients? Maybe Jason first. Uh, sorry, I uh, beg your pardon. Yeah. So what Stefan said in terms of um, the innovation potential and the consequences, what, what, he 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 brought several points up. So so what what is the the most um, comments when you come with a new module to a client? What what do you usually see? What is the most um, yeah most uh, frequent reaction, especially with the new products you came up with now? 180 so 166 came and then. I don't know, in a sudden you came with 182. Uh, so uh, basically, for example, uh, uh, for our uh, HIMO 5 based on 182 millimeter uh, wafer model. So uh, we think the male model innovation uh, is a uh, smart surgery. So for the uh, HIMO 5, as I addressed above, so basically, so long smart surgery includes two technology working tandem. So uh, it includes integrated segment ribbon and micro gap cell technology. And the triangular section of the ribbon can maximize the capture of solar energy. And while the flat section realizes the micro gap connection of cell. 
So that means the advantage of smart soldering is highly efficient and highly reliable. Mm, because of this technology innovation, you know, we have achieved the 2020 ones in the solar award. And um, basically when we uh, launch a new product, so uh, our customer will most cared. So first they, of course, about the, uh, whether it's cost effective and also uh, they care about the energy yield performance and the reliability of the system. Uh, because you know, the first principle of the uh, power plants is always the better LCOE. So our customer uh, will consider comprehensively all of the factors, including the motor cost and also the both, both cost of the system and the stability of energy yield and also the uh, reliability of our models and other system. And also uh, they will care the, as uh, I think as um, it's a system compatibility because um, so as uh, when we when you, when a new product is released so uh, for example for the EPC uh, they need to uh, consider the design of the power plants so then they they, they, are, they care about the cost uh, of the system yeah I think that's the uh, answer. Okay, Juan, so when, when you come with your new products, actually, and you kind of really show them what your, what your USPs are um, for that product to customers, so, so what's, your, what's the comments you are, are, are hearing usually, so especially with your new products, recent 182, Deep Blue, so what, what were the reactions? Uh, firstly, uh, it is our high reliability of the product, which is a fundamental thing, I think. Uh, we also use the high quality encapsulation materials, but mature workmanship and advanced management system to ensure the high quality stability under the mass production. Moreover, and the cell technology and the module technology we use is based on improving the customer's benefits, which is also our original attention. We designed the module for the rooftop customer commercial and industrial and uh, utility scale to meet the different customer's need. And at the meantime, we could provide superior solution for the reduction of the BOS cost, reducing the direct cost and the quality cost for the customer. Moreover, in comparison to the ultra large current module, the size survey proves that there will be a 2% increase for the electricity yield because of the lower module temperature. And we will keep on track for this data. Uh, that's it. Okay, thanks. Um, 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 Gao, um, so I think you, you have a very comprehensive um, solution actually, um, so because you do the tracker, you uh, come up with the new modules, you have the, the new clamps. Um, so what, what, and, and, and in your presentation, you also showed, of course, um, that 210 needed um, more explanation because, of course, it was a tick larger. It needed a tick more, um, yeah, um, applications. I think the the, the containers, uh, so the packaging had to be changed. That had to be done. You had to look for inverter manufacturers redesigning their products so that they can handle higher currents. So so. How did the discussions go actually with the, with the customers? Because um, as we can see from your numbers, um, you're selling a lot of products and you're focusing completely on that. Uh, yeah, Michael and uh, Steven, thank you for the information you showed. Actually from China point of view, uh, we are always customer value driven. And uh, we believe the performance on the electricity generation is one key element, but it's basic. Another key element uh, is the reliability. So we are very concerned on the reliability and the way we uh, invest a lot of effort and a lot of money uh, in the, to, to improve the reliability, to, to verify our reliability. But we believe still this is too uh, basic. And the customer, as Stephen just mentioned, customer have more and more requirements like the sustainability. As I just mentioned in my slide, uh, we are care about the CO2 emission, the carbon footprint, 
So all the products, when we designed, we think two things. Number one, uh, can we use such kind of uh, uh, recyclable material? Number two, is that, uh, is, that po is, that, is that possible that we can do some recycle? So this two parts uh, is in the consideration. And uh, uh, soon, uh, maybe you will see some, um, some new, new things comes from China, okay? And uh, from the sustainability point of view. And uh, secondly, as Stephen mentioned that about the uh, warranty to 35 years, I cannot see, uh, yeah, that, that's, that, that is, uh, uh, we, can, we can guarantee for that. But uh, I do heard some some points about it. But in other uh, another way, uh, I would like to see, uh, as Stephen mentioned, uh, the uh, innovation cycle is shorter and shorter, and uh, it's really need to it really need to do some financing analysis to see if it's uh, worth to keep the old design or renew the uh, renew the uh, the power plants. But of course, during the uh, life cycle of the power plants, we are also heard some a custom voice to see if the if that we can provide some modules to replace the older ones to repairing. Yeah, that, that is also in our consideration. Okay, and okay. And how, how is the, the feedback that you're getting? Because I think Stefan was also saying, okay, um, I don't know if it is special to Anna Park also that they prefer the smaller module so that one person can lift it um, because it doesn't matter actually I think uh, 182 are around 32 kilos uh, 210 are around 35 kilos so the difference is not so much if you talk about the uh, um, 60 cell 20 kilo um, <laughs> modules you had in the past um, or um, so 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 what's the feedback you you're getting on that from um, from from EPCs because the trend is there it's getting bigger Ryzen even talked about the 700 watt module it might get even larger than this so uh, so 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 what, what was the feedback you get from from customers from big EPCs also in China where um, of course, labor is probably cheaper, but um, but still, um, what's what's the feedback from the big EPCs installers? Okay, so I believe the application uh, will decide how the product will be looks like, and uh, look at the two ten. We have four hundred uh, wet XS, which is suitable for the residential application, and you can use it for DIY, right? And uh, that's uh, one application, and uh, also we have five hundred. Uh, which is suitable for, for some big residential and uh, CNI, that's the application. And for the utility, we can see two, two trends. First trend is difficult for installation. So we, we should provide a smaller module for one man handling. And uh, another, another trend is that, uh, as I wrote in some article, I said that uh, the bandering of the PV industry is changing from time to time. In many years ago, nobody can imagine we have 500 watt module, we have 400 watt module, it's 200 watt. And the 300 is all, all, already the rooftop, right? Now we can see the 600 and then maybe in the future we can see even bigger. But how we can handle that? Uh, what we can see, what we can imagine is in the future, maybe for the bigger utilities, especially the bigger utility in China in the flat uh, ground, uh, we can introduce some a mechanism to help the workers to handle to, to handle the modules onto the tracker to maybe automatic install the module onto the tracker. That will be completely change the uh, other uh, binary of our uh, PV industry. And uh, I believe it will lower the LCOE in advance. And at that time, we will see more. Uh, we can image, uh, it's, I think it's, it's a very uh, good future. That's another direction. Okay, okay. I think maybe Stefan, would you would you see that also that in the future actually it will be even more like everything is getting more automated that also installation could be much more automated that we see really robots like we see also now cleaning robots uh, that we have installation yeah, I think, robots. I, I think the interesting thing is that, that it's it's especially here in Europe uh, it's not dr so much driven that we that we want to optimize it to, to, I would say, to save cost or something. It is really, we do not have electricians anymore. The energy transition in, in, in Germany or in Europe can fail because we have no educated people anymore. And if you, if you want to make the electrical connection, you need electrician. And there are 
they are, there's not a single electrician who has no job. Yeah. So, and this is, uh, but, but, but this brings us also to innovations. Yeah. And, and uh, I'll give you an example. We developed this innovation uh, also for installing the, mo the modules also in harsh temperature. We did a hundred megawatt project in Kazakhstan, minus 20 degrees. We know that you cannot really make the cable connection for this degree. So what we build, we build a large tent. Yeah. And inside the tent, we prepare the modules and we, we slided it over the structure always outside. So we made the connection inside a tent, which was 20 degrees plus, and then, then we pushed it out. Uh, it was a more challenging, so finally we took the tent and moved uh, away. But I think the general concept to have one large area where, where you completely uh, away of harsh environment challenges and you do the installation and then you have probably small rolls in the structure and then you push the, the modules through the structure into the field, why not? Yeah, and, and this is then interesting. On the other hand, uh, Michael, you, you know this, we, we've seen, um, especially in the thin film industry, a few years ago, these, I don't know, five square meter, 10 square meter modules, which was then, I would say, installed with a, with, with a small truck. I think this failed, yeah? Um, and, and this is mainly driven because it, 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 it was too slow, yeah? However, again, I think we are always interested and I think it is good that all the manufacturers here on, on the panel uh, who are active in residential and commercial, because they are finally the market driver for new things. Yeah? And uh, with good marketing, you can convince them. And if we see that this works outside, then it's also easier for us to go to the installers and say, hey, guys, this is already in the market. So don't tell us this is new and you want to have one cent more for the installation. Yeah, so I think that all these players are in the, in the wide segment. This is this is interesting for us, and again, we are not against innovation, so not at all. Okay, maybe final word from everyone. So of course we are all suffering um, from well, some are also profiting from higher module <laughs> prices, but um, <laughs> but um, of we we expect of course this hike to at least ch some point change when there's again enough silicon and the uh, whole raw material uh, rally is uh, is coming to somewhat to normal again so but if we look at lcoe so that means we still have to compete on cost um, we still have to um, have to see um, when we when we want to get into into new applications that we get also um, also cheaper and continue that cor that course so what do you see everyone as the as the largest um, levers for for further um, LCOE reduction in the in the next two years let's see it was it like Shravan for example who said okay perk is at the end and it's now the cell um, we have to go to n type or whatever so where do we see actually now the next innovations coming in the next two years to um, get costs down so um i think everyone quickly jason maybe you want to start okay so uh basically uh you know i'm Lunchi, so uh for the product sale uh actually the uh, mass production, proxel efficiency has, I think, reached to about 23.2%. Uh, so since the, I think the uh, water record is close to 24%, I think, uh, I think in the next next uh, couple of years, still has a, a potential to improve the cell efficiency. Um, uh, we, we also have uh, a lot of work to do on the proxel and uh, proxel technology. Uh, in another hand, uh, for the high efficiency cell, uh, for example, for the N type, uh, Topcon, HJT. So, uh, you know, uh, I think it's uh, uh, recently the uh, Lumji has announced a uh, water record regarding the uh, Topcon cell and HJT cell. So, uh, which means that we um, uh, actually, you know, uh, each year uh, we spend about five to seven percent of our revenue. On our R&D, so regarding on different advanced and cutting edge technology, so we are evaluating you know, different set of technologies. Uh, for example, the HJT and Topcon and uh, Centenum. Um, so we are, uh, I think, we are R&D is uh, focused on uh, each of the technology. Um, however, uh, we think uh, this 
uh, NTAP high efficiency technology is uh, promising, uh, but still, uh, I think in recent years, maybe in uh, uh, this year or next year, uh, still uh, need uh, still face uh, some challenge. Uh, so the main challenge is because uh, I think the high cost of the I think the uh, the uh, sales uh, equipment, uh, for example, for the top car sale. Uh, so for uh, one gigawatt, the equipment cost will be I think close to um, three hundred million MB. And for the HGT, so the cost will be, will be higher. Uh, it's close to 500 million uh, MB uh, per gigawatt. Uh, so we think the, the, the NTAP is uh, most promising. So uh, once we uh, solve the cost issue and also the uh, high volume production issues, uh, yeah, that's all. Okay, thanks, Quan. Uh, so what do you think um, key, key ways to reduce further LCOE in the near future? Uh, to reduce the LCOE further, I think uh, we should analyze the cost. The costs are divided into direct costs and indirect costs. The leverage the cost of electricity reduction mainly rely on the reduction of the BOS costs and the increment of the electricity yield. Uh, for the direct cost reduction, the method could be improving the module power and efficiency by fissionality factor, reducing the degradation, etc. Uh, we use the optim optimized perk develop and also develop the N-type cell, as well as the slot frame used to reduce the installation cost. Uh, that can be the future potentials to reduce LCOE. Another expect is for the reduction of the indirect cost. The method includes improving the production yield rate of modules and reducing the quality risks. To achieve that, the intrinsic ability of manufacturer is very important. And we always insist on the reliability first. The life cycle quality management could be achieved by raw material and process control product quality control and the turnkey training, et cetera. So the reliability of both products and services are the key to provide a better solution in the future. So we may focus more on the service part. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, interesting. Um, Gao? Yeah, as you may know, uh, China is also looking into the uh, entire top con technology and the HJT technology as well. We are trying to figure out which product is the best fit for the future application. And uh, as I mentioned, it's all, everything is customer value driven. So we will pick and, uh, and uh, study carefully to pick up uh, the right product for our customer. That's uh, what we can see. Another thing is we are trying to do some um, innovation on the other part, not on the major, uh, we can see technical uh, paths uh, improve uh, evolution. That's that's you already you already know. We're also looking into some um, some um, other materials to see if it's uh, possible that can uh, can can help the customer save the initial uh, investment. That's uh, that's uh, I think that's the direction we are driving. Of course, I think the reliability is something not negotiable. So I will not really. Um, say that's will compromise anything here. Yeah. Okay, super, thanks. Um, maybe final word to you, Stefan. So, okay, at some point you hopefully can also buy cheaper modules again, but be excited from that. Um, where, where do you think uh, can you improve to, uh, to reduce LCOE? Yeah, I think the um, the older developments they are really promising, and and what I hear and what I listen uh, also from this platform and other platforms is to be honest super interesting, and I'm really looking forward to see also the the next steps and next phase, which are completely out of the box, non-standard new design developments. So I'm looking forward to it, and I hear now a lot of things from also our partners uh, that there are a lot of things are happening. But I think let us also do not underestimate that. The, the additional cost which are there. And this, uh, we all see the elephant in the room, customs duty in India now, uh, potential CO2 duty for products which have no CO2 footprint. 
I think we need to ensure also that um, that uh, our Chinese partner have a footprint here in Europe. No? So, and uh, I mean, logistic cost will increase, or will, will not decrease, let's say, so it will only increase. And, and this means automatically, if the module price goes down, the percentage of, of logistic cost will increase. Yeah. Um, CO2 footprint, I mentioned this already, but also local developments. No? So I think uh, uh, I would really love to see um, module assembly units somehow here in Europe and uh, this is also part of Solar Power Europe and all the politicians. This helps us a lot to enable and to the projects and to deep bottleneck the general processes. So I would really love to see one of you guys here in, in Europe somewhere. And let's make a really a gigawatt fab for module assembly unit. And then you can ship only cells. And I think this uh, to put cells in a container is easy. To put modules in a container, half of them is air. So um, looking forward to it, Michael. <laughs> Okay, super, thanks. Okay, so then, thanks to everyone. Um, thanks to all the speakers, to this panel. Thanks to the audience for staying with us for two days. Thanks to my team, actually, for helping us with the event. And um, just um, a few words. Um, as, um, as said, um, we will soon come out with a couple of reports, um, and um, we will here, this is, these are some of the reports you can download for free on our website. Um, there are several more coming until the end of the year. We have one more big event, one more um, virtual event, um, and that is um, taking place um, December 14 to 16. It will be a three-day event. And there we will delve into cell technology very deep, into all the cell technologies that are out there, especially the high-efficiency cell technologies. We will look into TopCon, where are we? Where can we go? We will look, talk to, we have equipment manufacturers, we will have materials companies, we will have researchers, and we will have cell module manufacturers simply to look into the state of the art of TopCon, of HJT, but even we'll look beyond that, that, beyond that. So, because we also heard, for example, that several companies are already um, working on tandem solutions and often perovskite is uh, the second part of the stacked cell. So that's what you can expect from us. Again, thanks for joining us and have a nice day still or a nice evening. Bye bye. Thank you, Michael. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye.